CP24, Toronto's breaking news. And for more on this fantastic day, the Bell Let's Talk Day, let's send it over now to CP24's Pooja Honda. Pooja? Well, we've been talking about uh, mental illness all day today, but uh, we want to talk now specifically about mental illness in the workplace. And I'm joined now by Dr. Ketty Kemkar, clinical psychologist at CAMH. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. And I think before we get started on mental illness in the workplace, let's talk about some of the contributing factors in the first place that actually lead to some of these illnesses. Yes, indeed, there are several uh, stressors that um, does increase uh, psychological distress in the workplace. Uh, for example, increasing uh, work hours, frequent traveling, or being assigned um, excessive work demands or responsibilities and not perceiving ourselves as being able to cope with the work demands or not perceiving as having enough resources to cope with the work demands and also having difficulty achieving a healthy balance between work and our personal life. So these are just some of the examples of various stressors that people go through. And this can often lead to depression. I mean, when we actually look at the numbers, half a million Canadians miss work every single day because of mental illness. So there's a direct correlation, I guess, between productivity and mental illness, and CAMH has done some work on this. Absolutely. We know, for example, stress. Stress is something that we all go through uh, daily, but it is the chronic stress, really, when the stress becomes prolonged and overwhelming, that it does lead to psychological disorders, so definitely depression, uh, anxiety disorders. So we know that the annual health care cost for um, is $51 billion uh, in Canada, and that is, again, because of um, the mental health problems are associated with reduced productivity, increased absenteeism, short-term and long-term disability. So really a case, I guess, could be made then for any employer who's watching right now, for any business, that there should be an investment made into mental health awareness and uh, you know some programs and resources, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. We know that work affects our mental health and mental health affects our work. So it's very important to uh, promote health and mental health in the workplace. So for example, uh, providing uh, supportive reintegration into work following leave of absence or healthy quality social support in the workplace and also um, not suffering in silence. That's a very important. So to know that there are various resources community resources, Center for Addiction and Mental Health. People can go to the employee assistance program. So there are various resources available. It's very important for people to seek help. You and I were talking earlier, and we are just talking about relationships in general, and you, you, you made a very good point. You said all relationships are important, anyone that you have, Absolutely. and it's important that they're healthy, and I guess that includes having one with your coworkers and with your employer. Exactly, because we know also whenever uh, we suffer from mental health problems, let's say depression, it does increase interpersonal conflict um, at work. Work. And we also bring the stress in one area of our life into another area of our life, so it could be home. So this is how we often end up with um, work-to-home interference, home-to-work interference, which then compounds uh, psychological distress. What would your advice be to anybody who's watching right now who may be afraid to uh, let their employer know about something that they're battling right now, and also for an employer who might be watching right now on how they can help their employees? What I would say is that it's very important not to suffer in Silence. Millions of people do go through uh, mental health program, mental health um, problems, and we do have effective treatments available. So, employee assistance a program that that's maybe a starting point, or their general practitioner, and then to have uh, the appropriate referral. So, really accessing uh, a treatment that will, will be very important to as a starting point. Dr. Kemkar, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Uh, we of course want to keep the conversation going. Uh, it's on you at home right now. Very simply, all you have to do is send us a text. Any text that's sent or long distance call today, as we mentioned on the Bell Network, uh, will actually donate five cents uh, to the cause. We are trying to beat what we did last year. 66 million texts were sent, as well as long distance calls. We raised $3.3 million, so we did very well. Thank you very much for that, but we are hoping to beat that this year. So uh, keep those texts coming 416 807 2424. I'm going to be responding to those texts personally.